looks like a fire near the Endicott building. Those are smoke signals. Now, what's this all about? Is this some kind of a publicity stunt? A motion picture? I brought him to help you. I don't need any help. So you wanted for murder? The kid is obviously looking for a witness to help his father. What about the finder's fee on the jewels? Like I said, we split it right down the middle. <laughs> oh! oh, you scared 10 years out of me. It won't matter. What's that supposed to mean? You're going to take a little jump from your balcony. Oh! Oh! Knock it off, please. Uh, uh, do you remember? What? Will you stop that? What? Never finishing a sentence. What do you want me to remember? That. What? They would have had to tear your tongue out before you'd yell at me like that once. Oh, great. And that's what you want me to remember now? Donald, that's all I got left. Memories. Holly, what do you want from me? Do you realize I'm going to have 20 minutes to open 60 locks? And look at my hands. I'm shaking like an alky. Hey. Hey. So don't open. So don't open 60 locks in 20 minutes. Let's, let's just hang out like Holly. this and forget about everything. <laughs> Will you grow up, please? Do you know what this place right here sets me back every month? Do you understand that? Of course. You never let me forget. Great. Well, after today, I'm going to have enough so it won't even matter. So what does it matter? I can always work in a department store. I know the price of everything. This silk blouse was $140, and my shoes are $38, and this ring, a carrot and a half. Holly. Genuine article, $3,000. Then we got the bracelet and the ring. Holly, the what are you store. talking oh. about? Money, the only thing you care about. This... Huh? Don't hear me.
everybody here? Except McLeod. Oh, good. Everybody who should be here is. Morning, ladies. Gentlemen. Now you all know what this meeting is for. The uh, commissioner has decided to try a new program. It's a weekly meeting where you officers can air your beefs and uh, make suggestions in an atmosphere of relaxation and friendship. First off, anybody have a beef? Good, good. Now, if there are no suggestions, we can all get back to work. Uh, Chief, what's your trouble? I have a suggestion that could prove useful. Oh? The chief has impressed on us that physical fitness is one of the most important assets for any police team, and that to be able to fulfill the demanding role of today's Maggie, this still in there? Uh-huh. Uh, McLeod, I'm about to give you the best advice of your life. Okay. Turn around and get out of here. Hey, would you mind? Where'd you get this? What's up a tree? <laughs> Believe me, McLeod, you're still up it. Equipment is there, all those scattered all over the precinct since our last move. And the room is available, too, right here. All we have to do is get the equipment together. So it seems to me that with uh, very little extra cost to the department, we could have a gym set up uh, next to the locker room. That's the stoop. No, Sergeant, I think everyone here will agree with me that that is not a practical suggestion at this time, right? What about you, McLeod? Well, I didn't hear what Joe had to say to begin with. That's not what I meant. Oh, you mean about my being late? Well, I did run into a little difficulty there. But you know, it opened up a suggestion that might be of great help to the department. I thought you already were a great help by not showing up. <laughs> no, Chief, I think that, uh... Stop bragging. Well, then that about takes care of the suggestions for this session. And I think we can all agree it's been a very positive meeting. However, I have one or two suggestions that I think everyone will like very much. First, on the business of promptness. Donald, don't go. I feel it in my bones. You know something, Holly? You're not too bright. I'm bright enough to know we're finished. Not until I say so, baby. Well, it's up to both of us. I'm a person, too. A person? You're a nothing. I'm a singer. I nearly got a session with, with Decca Records. Nearly. Nearly, sweetheart. That's the story of your life, isn't it? And also ran, except as an actress. As an actress, you didn't even get a nearly. You didn't get to first base, did you? You didn't think like that when we first met. When we first met, do you know how you looked? When I heard that noise in the next room, I thought it was a drowned cat, Holly. You had a fever that was coming right out of the top of the thermometer. And you know what you looked like? You looked as though you'd crawled right out of a blender, baby. Yeah? Yeah. Well, let me tell you the truth. The only reason I took up with you was Look, I, I don't even give a damn. You understand nice that? I don't care. You. Can you help me? Oh, please, break my heart another day, will you? Well, I'm not going to be here when you get back. You... Listen, lame brain. If you blow this job so... And you be there exactly where I told you, when I told you. Do you understand? Do you understand that? Yeah. And get there on time! All right. <laughs>
And for my fourth suggestion, beginning next week, these sessions will begin an hour earlier. So you don't have to do it on department time. Joe. Joe, would you... Fifth and foremost... Six hundred. Saturday. This is a cash game. You won't get stiff. Congratulations. Straight. No, I'm telling you, I've had this feeling for more than a week. It's like uh, somebody's always behind me, like somebody's following me all the time. We have six minutes to make sure. Convinced? I don't know. Maybe. There are no maybes. We either do the job as I planned, exactly as I planned, which means now, or we drop the whole project. Drop it? Over this nut? It's about time. Come on, you can see we weren't followed. Who would have spotted any tail by now? Donald? Okay. Hey, I was wrong. I thought you said it was going to last only 10 minutes. I said that? That's ridiculous. Let me see your authorization. Oh, sure. Nice and easy now. I get the others. There's a 30 cent bullet in here that says you either hurry or you're going to be dead. Gentlemen, can you come here a minute? Now, all of you lie face down there behind the counter. Don't look back. Nothing will happen. Get down.
wraps it up. Except for one final point. McLeod. McLeod, just a second, Chief. Just a... What are you writing? Well, I don't think it matter much to you. I'll decide that. In, Joe. Go, yeah. Should the care? What does that mean? Well, it doesn't make much sense, I'll tell you that. You wrote it down. Well, it's not my fault. That's what it says. Like a fire near the Endicott building. Boost. More gibberish? No, it's White Mountain. McLeod, give me a straight answer. Well, I am. White Mountain's Apache. Those are smoke signals. smoke signals that you sent up were as phony as a three dollar bill. Mind telling me what you're up to? Huh? Now, mister, you're in a mess of trouble. Carrying a dangerous weapon, arson, disturbing the peace, probably a dozen more. Now, what's this all about? This is not some kind of a publicity stunt, is it, for a Hollywood motion picture? Do you realize what kind of a spectacle you're making of yourself? Mister, I don't know what you got in mind, but I want to tell you you're about the corniest looking Indian that I've ever seen. And that includes the wooden ones in front of cigar stores with the war paint all over their faces. A man must do what he can. Well, what are you going for? A great search. After what? You still haven't told me what you're looking for. My grandson, Johnny Stillwater. That's right. Throw for another 15 minutes or so. Well, they found tsetse fly larvae in the rug. I knew you would understand. Thank you. No, I'm... Front desk. There's Mr. Gallus. 
lying down. We have a slight problem here in the lobby. I want you to take all the new guests in the hotel up to the roof garden, and I want you to give them a complimentary meal with the best champagne we have. Right away. Do it. This is the front desk. The fire department arrived on the scene shortly after the smoke was reported. And then to add to the color of the occasion, a Marshal Sam McCloud, on special duty with the New York Police Department from Taos, New Mexico, was the officer sent to investigate. And all that they found was a picturesque gentleman on the roof and a bucket with wet rags producing the smoke. Police and firemen then huddled to discuss what law had been broken, but without success. And whether that smoke was a signal to attack or an invitation to a powwow still isn't clear at this hour. Well, you made it. New story of the hour. Did they give him my address? It's necessary. Necessary? Johnny must know where he can find me right away. It's that urgent? Life and death. Whose? He's. Well, how do you know he's in New York? He sent me a letter from here. There's no return address? He was on the trail of four men who robbed a hotel in Phoenix. My son was working in the hotel. The men escaped. But my son was taken in as one of the burglars. He is innocent, but still he sits in prison in Arizona. And now your grandson is after those men. He has sworn to avenge his father, to prove his innocence. Yeah, well, that still doesn't tell me what you were doing up on the roof. What else was left? When I came to New York, I went to the papers, to the television stations, the radio, even to the police, and reported him as missing. No one would help. So you set up a Wild West show? A man must do. Yeah, I know. A man must do what he can. You have a heart that listens. <laughs> I'm going to have a back that's blistered when I try and sell this story. To, to explain what happened. You can forget the plea. Now, whether I like the rules or not, my job is to carry them out. You broke the law, you were arrested. Now, it's out of my hands. Well, not necessarily. What do you mean? I haven't booked him yet. You have to. It's your duty. And it's his right. Yeah, well, I... Uh, I started to book him, but I couldn't figure out what offense. Just open the book and point. Setting a fire in... On a public building, creating a disturbance, carrying a deadly weapon? You know, I thought about all of those, but when Shove came to push, uh, they didn't hold as much water as a sieve. McLeod in 10,000 words or less? Well, it actually wasn't a fire. All he did, he just got some rags together and made a lot of smoke. Now, that wasn't dangerous. And as far as uh, disturbing the peace, it wasn't as much that as it was that he just kind of aroused the public interest in what he was doing. As far as this Tommy Hawk is concerned, that's about as dangerous as a baby's first goo. <laughs> what do you have to say? Nothing. Nothing? After all the trouble you caused, nothing? He told me to say nothing. Stay out of it. Could be a liar. Are you from the Southwest, too? Never left there before. Must be something in the water. That's terrible. I'm very sorry to hear that. Madam, I am distraught too. And I tell you what I want you to do. I want you and your husband to be the hotel's guests. Oh, how long were you here? That's all right. It's our pleasure, I assure you. 
You're welcome. Front desk. Ready a second. No more time. This is about ready, man. I said there's no more time. This point on is too dangerous, and all the factors become negative. Where'd you get those things, anyway? At a custom shop on 42nd Street. They guaranteed them to be genuine. You know, I'm sorry. What about? Well, the trouble I got you in with your chief. Well, it really doesn't make much difference whether you drown in 80 feet of water or 90. You think like an engine. <laughs> you think like a Madison Avenue ad man. One, five, ten, sixteen, have a ten, fifteen. A man must do what he can. Park Avenue and Sixth yeah. Street. Over. Tell me something, Chief. You figure that Johnny's gonna look you up? If he sees my picture in the paper. Well, if he doesn't, he'll be the only one in New York City that won't. He's close to them. I know it. How long's he been tracking them? Ever since his father was taken by the police. He ran away from school. And he took a blood oath to avenge his father. Nobody could stop him? Who? All units vicinity of Park Avenue and 16th Street. We have a 1030 location Antoine Hotel. Four suspects escaped, probably north on Park Avenue. All units, 1006, out. Shouldn't you go there? No, oh, there's more than enough to answer the call. Besides, the smartest thing I can do right now is get you back to your hotel so you won't miss Johnny's call. Unit 5, Apple 23. I, I heard the cry for help, and I went behind the counter, saw the guy's handcuffed, and that's all I know. Honestly, that's what it is. Anything? Not unless we get an eyewitness. Luckily, you won't. Why luckily? He'd be dead. They don't leave witnesses. You keep your hands still. What do you want from me? Just you. What do you mean, me? I'm Johnny Stillwater. Listen, uh, what do you want from me? I want you and the bag you're carrying. The bag? What for? Proof that you were involved in today's robbery 
and the one back in Phoenix. Oh, listen, kid, you're crazy. Do you know that? I've never... What happened? Do you know who did it? Well, who? Uh, it was it was it was a young kid, an, an Indian. Indian? Yeah, I heard him. I heard him say his name, Johnny Stillwater. They said they wiped everything clean. I never get a good look at him. He made me fish down in the car. Those are big boys, Chief. Not a smudge. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Any ideas? Disc? A couple. Yes. One worse disc than the other. Chief Griffiths, for you. Clifford. When? Where? Broadhurst. Thank you for your help. That's okay. There's one thing, though. Uh, when you talk to your grandson, Chief, if he still have a mind to go after those fellas, you better give me a call. I might be able to talk him out of it. Why? Why? Why do you help me? <laughs> well, I guess it's just because, uh, you could say we're launchmen. Launchmen? Yeah, it's a word that I picked up here in New York. It means that even though we might be strangers here, we still come from the same neck of the woods. Code 36, units 18, 32, 41. Alley between Hartley and Bender Streets. APB as follows. Johnny Stillwater, male, American Indian. Height, 5'10", age approximately 23. About 160 pounds, black hair. Suspect might be armed. Oh. <laughs> Grandson pulled a knife on this man. While they were fighting, apparently got pretty badly stabbed in the leg. I'm afraid he ended up killing him. Any witnesses? A girl. Saw the whole thing. How'd she know his name? Did you overheard him say it? Well, there's a possibility they knew each other. You mean the Indian and the girl? No, the Indian boy and the dead man. Well, I just got here myself, McLeod. I'm here to get answers, not give them.
this trail. Come on, I'll drive you back. I need time to think. I will walk. Aren't you with a posse? My name's Sam McLeod. I'm with the New York Police Department on special assignment from Taos. Is that anywhere near Boise? It's in the same country. I always was lousy at geography. Is that why you wound up in the alley? What's that got to do with China? Well, according to the testimony here, you, uh, you were there to meet a friend. There's a law? Well, it just strikes me as a peculiar place to meet a friend. Have you ever tried to park in a New York street? It's either a, a ticket, tollway, or no hubcaps. <laughs> Didn't it strike you as a little bit strange that a boy would introduce himself before he tried to rob somebody? You ever see a crazy Indian roaring toward you on a bike holding a knife from here to tomorrow? Believe me, mister, after that, nothing strange. Can you tell me your name? Who? The friend, the girl that you were to meet in the alley. You said you were going to meet somebody in the alley. Ah, uh, now, 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 listen here. What's going on here? I came down here like a good citizen to help out, and you're treating me like I'm on the way to the electric chair. I'm leaving. I'm glad to drop you. Uh, I don't like horses or trust cowboys. See Johnny. If he calls me, I'll tell him. Now look, see, I gotta tell you something. One way or another, Johnny's gonna get it. He's gonna get it from the police if he puts up too much of a struggle, and he's gonna get it from the robbers if he meets up with them first. He's chosen his path, let him walk. You know, he's alone. He's a lot more alone than anybody ought to be. Now, if you know where he's at, it's not gonna do him any favors to keep it a secret. It's his choice. Well, a kid might decide to go out in the street and play in the traffic. Does that mean you let him? I cannot take you to him. Well, I think you can. Now, look, if he doesn't want to come in, I'm not going to force him. I'm not going to bring him in. And I'm not going to tell anybody where he's at. I promise you that. But I've got to talk to him. It's very important. you got to trust me. Thanks. There you go. That's good for a day. Don't worry. I do my exercise. Amazing. All those nasty things they're saying about us in the paper. There's $100,000 in cash in one of those boxes. And no one even mentioned it was gone. I wonder where it came from. Well, there's no question about where it's going to. <laughs> that suitcase of yours hold any more, Cookie? Where do you want me to put it? In the bank? Now, how about you? A wild gambling spree or some childish orgy? You want to see some of the child? What about you this time? Guilt edge municipal bonds. No signature needed. 9% interest. And the warm knowledge that'll help some communities solve their fiscal problems. <laughs> How long's it gonna take to turn them jewels into cash? 
Ten days, two weeks at the most. All right. You know where I'll be when you get the money. I think there's one remaining problem we should solve before you go. Yeah? What's that? Johnny Stillwater. <laughs> I hope he does come after me. Cookie, someone once said, you either learn from history or you're doomed to make the same mistake over and over again. Well, this is our country's bicentennial year. We should learn from our forefathers. What are you talking about? United we stand and divided we fall. Like Donald. Meaning what? The kid is obviously looking for a witness to help his father. Now, when he finds one of us, wouldn't it be reassuring if all three of us were there? to help you. I don't need any help. Well, then you don't know what the situation is. You want it for murder. He was scum. That doesn't give you the right to track him down. You sound like a cop. I am a cop. Natan, wait. Sorry, Johnny, you gave me no choice. Old man, when will you learn? We can't trust anyone. Why don't you fix his leg and we'll talk. Looks like a Saturday night special. Where'd you get it? I was mugged. Took it away from him. I promised your grandfather that I wouldn't bring you in. I mean to make good on my promise, but you gotta tell me what happened and just the way that it happened. You're a cop. Figure it out for yourself. John, you will show respect. Why should I? Because I say so. You won't take me in? That's the truth? That's the truth. McLeod, your truth hasn't got anything to do with the facts. The facts are that Don Williams had the case with the key blanks, right? And his pants were, were wet with suds. Now, what more do you want? The punk kids don't go around killing people, even he, criminals. It was self-defense. He was trying to bring him in. We'll know more about that after he's caught and we have a chance to question him. Chief, I'm telling you, you're going to be awful sorry if you don't pull back on that APB. Why? Because I know this guy. He has no faith in the police. He's not going to let himself be brought in easy. And if he gets cornered, somebody's going to get hurt, and it's going to be needless. McLeod, could you have brought Johnny Stillwater in? No. Does that mean you didn't see him? No. What happened? He ran away? No. He overpowered you? No. You fell in love? I gave my word. Your word? That's the only way I could convince Chief Stillwater to take me to him. I gave my word that I wouldn't bring Johnny in. And you gave an oath to the force that you would. And I will. If you'll just pull back on that APB and give me some slack, I will. No. He's the only one that saw him rob the Antoine Hotel. He's the only witness that we got. He can help us. He even gave me their names. What are they? Don Williams, he's a dead one. Linus Morton, he's a disbarred lawyer. Cookie Watkins, he carries more guns than an arsenal. B.G. Clarkston. How'd you know? Burglary knew a few hours after the Antoine was cleaned up. There are only a few teams that could pull off something like this once Williams was found. They knew how the others had to be. Did you pick them up? Not yet. Not yet why? No proof. No proof? You got proof? There's lots of proof. You just turn your back on it. Meanwhile, an innocent kid, is, he's got his life on the line, just like his father had. McLeod, I'm warning you. You're on a collision course with me. Now, that boy killed a man, one way or another. And I'm not taking any chances that the next one is a member of the force. The APB stands. McLeod, stay away from it. 
If you think that I'm going to stand around scratching my navel while some innocent kid's Johnny Stillwater and Chief Stillwater are still in deep water, New Mexico, as far as you're concerned. I gave you a direct order. Follow it. Must be Johnny Stillwater. What can I do for you? We're going to the police. Why? I've been waiting for you. And for those jewels. You're naive. The case is empty. Before we could get on with our plans, the problem with you has to be resolved. all over for me. I just feel... Uh, is there anything that I can do? When hope is gone, life is over. Juanina, 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 Chief, I, I, I don't understand the chant. Johnny is dead. My friend. Yeah? Would you stop? I would like to sit here by myself with the trees out in the open just for a while. I'll wait for you. No, I'll be all right. That's not a chant for the dead, it's for the dying. Who's dying? It's for yourself, isn't it? You can't do that, Chief. You can't just give up. My purpose is over. It is time. How is he? Well, he's old, but he's in perfect health, and he can go. No, I want him in a room where he'll be under doctor's care. Why? 
Well, this might sound a little bit weird to you, but the man's gonna die. Well, so are we all, but that doesn't make it an emergency. No, you don't understand. The man wants to die. He wants to die. Well, that's not in this department. The suicide prevention clinic is upstairs. Doc, I want him in a room where he can be watched. In a room. Look, Slim, anything less than intensive care is out of my realm. I'll check him in upstairs. Where Oh, this is McLeod. I want to work on that Hotel Antoine robbery. No, I've got a unit working on that. They don't need any help. Chief Stillwater does. He's willed himself to die. Willed himself? McLeod, I don't understand Indians or their ways. Now, believe me, I feel very sorry for that old man, too. But I've got a department to run. Now, you're too emotionally involved in this. My order stands. Stay out of it. Please. I can't let that man die. You're not. That's up to the doctors. Chief, the doctors can give him penicillin by the truckload. They can give him antihistamines till he's got him up to here. They can give him sassafras tea. It's not going to help. And neither can you. Well, I think I can. And I got to try. No, there's only one thing you got to do, McLeod. Obey orders. Stay out of this. Chief. There's a man that's rotten to death in prison for something that he didn't do. His son is laying dead in the morgue for no good reason at all. And a good man is dying in a hospital because he doesn't have anything left to live for. And the people that created this mess are running around scot-free and will probably wind up rich. Well, I'm not just going to stand idly by and let it happen. I got to do something. No, not while you're a member of this force. Okay. I resign. You realize what you're doing, McLeod? Yeah. What I have to. Your gun stays with it. This gun is mine. That's your permit to use it. McLeod, you step one foot out of line. The department's not going to lift a finger to help you. You're in this on your own all the way. That's all. Tunes too, and I know I know every. I'm so nervous. I know every song ever written. Uh, I can fulfill most of your uh, patrons' requests. Hold on. Every one of them. Take it easy. You were great, terrific, you're real good. Thank you. Great. Uh, do you think you can use me? Sure, sure. Tell you how we work it. You come in later tonight, sing a few songs, and we we'll see how my customers go for you. What time? Well, most of the people drift in about 10. Why don't you come in about 8 or so? We'll have a little dinner and back first. Get acquainted. I got some good wine. <sighs> Sing pretty good. Yeah, pretty terrible to me. Oh, you seem to like it. Yeah, just about every part of me but my vocal cords. What are you doing here? I need your help. I already gave it the office. Yours. It's not my office anymore. I quit. Why? Do you know that the Antoine jewels could come to over $2 million? What's that got to do with the price of tea? I know that you lied to me before. 
About what? Donald Williams. Now, listen. I don't know what your business is, mister, but, but I know mine. Now, now, butt out. I also know you're broke. And, and Columbus discovered America, so what? I got a little proposition. How? Oh, I'm only used to big ones like dinner in the back of bars. You know, the finder's fee on those jewels is like 10%. That could get you $100,000. What about you? I have to be the same. You aren't the type. Well, you know, $100,000 can change a man. Maybe, but it's something else with you. Why do you say that? You haven't got itchy palms, I can tell. And one thing I learned from Donald, you always got to figure out what the other guy wants so you know he's not after you. You know, huh? Come on, I'll show you. I had to see this for myself. He is dying. How much time do you think he's got? Eight years of medical training, and I haven't the slightest idea. You mean he can make himself die just like that? Morning, Chief. I have thought much about what you intend to do. Well, that's nothing that you have to worry about now. You must talk to him. Make him understand. What? He must not go after those men. I have lost a son. I've lost a grandson. I do not want to lose a friend. Chief, I was kind of hoping that uh, maybe she'd give me a hand. Save Chief's life. How? By proving that the men that robbed that Antoine Hotel are the same ones that robbed the Phoenix Hotel several years back. His son's in jail for that. If I can get him free, I can give the Chief some hope. What about the finder's fee on the jewels? Like I said, we split it right down the middle. What do you say? Why not? I can always use the money. That's Linus. He's got a bit black belt. And that's Cookie, and that's BG. Linus was bragging about how the cops don't dare drag him in without evidence it's false arrest. So what are you going to do? <laughs> well, maybe we'll get one of them to confess. That chance. <laughs> Everybody will talk if the screws are turned hard enough. Which one's the weakest link? Hmm? Oh, BG. That one. Looks like a real dude, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what do you know about him? Three things. Gambling, gambling, gambling. And not necessarily in that order. <laughs> No, 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 I'll take mine. I'm in the next room there. There you go. Thank you, partner. Have you fallen for me? Have I what? Do you dig me? I mean, you practically haven't left my side since we made our deal. Well, I guess I like you a lot. But you're not crazy about me. Well, 
that's not it. I still can't figure out why you brought me along. I told you everything I know about Beachy. Guess I just like having you around. Yeah, like a sharp stick in the eye. You don't trust me. Hey, <laughs> look, trust has got nothing to do with it. You think I might be playing both sides against the middle? I didn't say that I think I any such I, thing. I thought we were friends. Well, we are friends, but you know, friendship is like, it's like wine, it takes a little time to get good. That's practically like calling me a double crosser. Would you not take this personal? Well, it's not like we're talking about the guy down the block. Boy, you're something else. Well, what do you want me for, anyway? I need your help. Doing what? Getting a confession out of BG. <laughs> Hey, we got a winner here. Here we go. Round and round, and the winner's coming up. Here we go, slowly. That's it. Ah, and it's a 21. Wow. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> what? Double on the chips. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, I could bet on Napoleon winning at Waterloo and they'd have to rewrite history. I can't lose! Yeah. Here we go. Mm. Place your bets. Come on, baby. Thank you. Double. Okay. Here we go now. Hey, friend, there's plenty of space for everybody. Not for you, there isn't. Here we go. Place your bets. You're wrong, friend. And there's always room for one more. No. Not since the Antoine Hotel. Mr. B.G. Clarkston, paging Mr. B.G. Clarkston. Please come to the lobby. Mr. B.G. Clarkston, please come Watch to the lobby. Watch this, Thanks. Here we go, we're spinning around again. And the winner is 17 red. B.G. Holly. B.G., we're in awful trouble. Have a good time, baby. What's wrong? I came here to warn you. About the cowboy? He's here. Who is he? Sam McCloud. He's he's out to get everybody who's involved in the Antoine Hotel. I'm in the clear. Well, so is everybody else, but he's on a personal vendetta. About what? He's out to free that dead Indian kid's father who's in jail in Phoenix. And you know what for. How did he know about you? He found out I was Donald's girlfriend. What'd you tell him? Nothing. He went crazy and he said he was going to kill everybody. How do I know you're on the level? Why else would I warn you? You tell me! I want Donald's share of the jewels. We're not so dumb after all, are we? <laughs> well, how smart do you have to be? I need money and I don't want to die. <laughs> Get it out of here. Holly, you told me what you're trying to pull <laughs> off. I want to tell you this. Hey, hey, hey! You're not going to tell me anything except what I want to hear. And that's a full confession on the Antoine robbery and the one in Phoenix. You're making a mistake, you know. I mean, I, I don't know anything about that. Buster, you're up to your neck. And I'm going to push you the rest of the way down. Unless I get some cooperation out of you. Okay, okay, okay. Huh? How about a deal? A deal? All right. All right, I'll make you a deal. You help me nail Linus Morton and Cookie Watkins, and I'll see what I can do for you when your day in court comes. Well, you know, I need a little time to think that over. I'm in room 1602. We got till 10 o'clock. So what did you tell McLeod? I told him I'd talk to him later. I mean, so what do I do? No problem. Let's go along with him. How? Confess or get killed? BG, you don't know a thing about self-defense, do you? Yeah, only that I don't like it. The other guy gets the first lick in. Not in this case. He's obviously after the three of us. You topped the list. He came to Las Vegas to hunt you down. So striking first this time is still self-defense. How am I supposed to take on a cop single-handed? You won't. I'll give you a number. All right, how do I work it? Hello. I found over McLeod now. I want to make a deal.
Uh, where are you? Room 1712. I'll be right there. You think you're going to get Fiji to sign that confession? You're crazier than I think you are, which is really going some. Well, that was him on the phone. He said he would. Well, so so every producer that, that, that wants to make out tells me I'm going to be a star. So what? People will tell you anything to get what they want. I just have to play it out. Well, have, have you got your gun at least? Not with me. Well, terrific. You're going to get you're going to get your head blown off. Well, that's a chance we're going to have to take. <gasps> and your life. <laughs> hey. No hey. go. Don't go. Hey, come on. Please now. don't go. Come on. Don't go. What kind of a business partner have you turned out to be, huh? What is this? Sam, you know as little about women as up. You go get yourself a gill. I'm never gonna think you again. Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh... Hey. 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 <laughs> Well, I hope you change your mind about that. Mm. Hmm? Mm. See your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Who is it? McLeod. Cloud, what happens next? Sign it. Why should I sign this? There isn't a shred I of evidence. I didn't come up me. here to hear you beat your gum. Sign it. If I sign this, I'm in more trouble. No man's life hanging in you. the balance. I don't have time to mess with you. Sign it. tell you. Look, I don't know what's wrong with him. And I don't know what to do about it. Look, I don't know a damn thing, and that's the honest truth. Does he have much more time? Yeah, I don't know that either. But, you know, I... I do honestly believe that... it's strictly up to him. Okay, thanks, Doc. So Cookie always carries more than one gun, huh? Sam, you can't go after Cookie. He's a psycho. He'd just as soon kill you as look at you. I gotta get one of them to talk. Well, Cookie and Linus aren't gonna, aren't gonna confess. I gotta believe they will. Tell me the truth. What's really bugging me, anyway? Johnny Stillwater could still be alive. Well, you told me about that. You, you couldn't go back on your word. My word? His life! Well, you couldn't have known. Would you just tell me what I want to know about Cookie? He's gun crazy. Every time he shoots one off, it makes him feel like a man. Boy, Donald used to hate him. Why him more than the others? Probably because of all his money. Cookie always had this suitcase, and uh, Donald told me every dollar Cookie ever made was still in it. You mean his share of the Phoenix job, too? Guess so. D Donald always used to put him on about it. He used to say, hey, Cookie, let me see one of your fives. like to see what Lincoln looked like when he was a boy. Could you tell me a little bit more about the suitcase? Well, it was, uh, it was an old, dirty, blue suitcase. Does Cookie's sister know what he does? I don't think so. How far is her house from New Orleans? About 30 minutes. Restaurants in the world. 
And then I swam up Niagara Falls backwards with my hands tied above my head, blindfolded. Hmm. And I was afraid this was going to be a dull trip. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about Cookie Watkins. What'd you say? Um, why don't uh, you just drop me off here, and uh, I'll get in a little Mardi Gras, and then I'll meet up with you later. I'd rather you stuck close by me. What do you need me for? Keep you from getting killed. Who's gonna kill me? Maybe Linus Morton if you got a call from BG. Yeah. Give me a couple of dollars and maybe I could get some decent food. It is still tastes like slop. Cookie? How about it? Let me have $50 for a brand new dress. It's on sale. I told you I was broke. You wouldn't even help your own sister. You don't need help. Them guys that come over to see you, they don't care what dress you're wearing. Besides, you don't keep it on long enough. over while I was here. I didn't. You really know how to show a girl a good time, McCloud. There you go. Who is he? Never seen him before. Yeah? Get rid of him. Looking for Cookie. What do you think this is? A store? <laughs> Cookie Watkins. He ain't here. You know where he is? Don't know him. He's just a little twerp, about this high. <laughs> Why is it you want to see him anyway? Well, what difference does it make if you don't know him? I tell you, if you run into him, uh, tell him I'm ready to make a trade. Trade what? I got something that he wants. He's got something that I want. You still ain't told me what. Well, you just tell him that if he's interested in getting it back, I got his suitcase. If I do run into him, where you be? I'll be back. He's looking for you. A cop? I don't think so. He said he'd make a trade. What kind of trade? Mm, I don't know. Mm, maybe something to do with your suitcase? What are you talking about? He was in the back seat of his car. Suitcase? <laughs>
stay put. Must be Cookie Watkins. Uh, who? who? Who are you? Sam McLeod. Well, uh, uh, what, 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 what do you want? Uh, yeah. Hey, what is this? Citizen's arrest. You, you, you gotta be crazy. Cops got nothing on me. What's in that case? Let's go. Help! Help, officer! Help! Hold it, officer! Hold it! This man's a killer. No, no, officer. Look, look. He's trying to hold me up. See, see, he's taking my back. Officer, I'm on special assignment. I'm a police officer. Give me the gun. That's impossible. McLeod couldn't kill a man in cold blood. He didn't. Well, then how did it happen? He was after Watkins. Watkins ran. Somewhere along the line, he was hit by a float in the Mardi Gras. Well, then it was all right. All right. Clifford. McLeod here, Chief. What do you want? I'm calling from New Orleans Airport. I'm just about to get on a plane for New York. So? Well, I wanted to explain to you what happened. There's nothing to explain. You quit the force to go after three robbers. Two of them are dead. Yeah, well, I'm still going after that third one. Cloud, I want to tell you something. If anything happens to him, I will personally lock the door on your cell and throw away the key. Well, Chief, you got to hear me out for a second. You? A second? I'd settle for an hour. Who is this? Chief Peter B. Clifford, New York Police Department. What can I do for you, Chief? Nothing. I called to warn you about one of my former officers, named McLeod. He uh, resigned the force to go after the Antoine Hotel robbers, personally. Yeah? What's that got to do with me? Well, I have reason to believe that McLeod thinks you were one of the robbers. Chief, do you realize what you're accusing me of? 
Mr. Morton, I'm not accusing you of anything. But as a police officer, I'm forwarding information that may save your life. Now, McLeod's coming in from New Orleans on a plane right now. With him is a woman named, uh, Holly Dayton. She was a girlfriend of one of the dead men, so be careful. Now, if there's anything I can do, why, call me. Thank you, sir. I'll do that. Right. I'll tell you the truth, your best chance is to dump me. Dump you? Yeah, dump me. I'm a washout. <laughs> kind of hard on yourself, ain't you? Hard, easy. But it adds up to the same. A failure's a failure. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of the time that I saved up all my money and bought myself a trombone. You? Oh, yeah, that was a brand spanking new trombone. Shiniest, brassiest thing you ever saw. I really thought I could play a fool out of it. Yeah. yeah until I tried out for the high school band. Nothing. What did you do? Just kept trying. Made it my senior year. See, you're not a failure. Well, neither are you. Not a failure at all. I heard your audition. Yeah. Person's not a failure as long as they keep trying. It's when they quit that they're a failure. <laughs> What's that for? I never could keep my hands off trombone players. Oh. Be careful. I will. Sam, you, you too, huh? soft spot for you. Never could figure out what you saw in Donald. How'd you get in here? Donald told me a little about locks and keys. He should have taught you a little about manners. I don't think a note will even be necessary. A note? What kind of a note? Suicide. For who? The strain. That's it. The strain finally got her. Her boyfriend was killed. No money, no job. Yeah, probably won't matter at all. Who cares enough about you to even investigate? What are you gonna do? Nothing. <sighs> You're gonna take a little jump from your balcony. But why? Linus, oh, I, I, I've never done anything to hurt you, you know? That's true. Right? <laughs> But you know, you're the only one left who ever could. <laughs> That'd be sloppy of me, wouldn't it, to leave that undone? You know, honey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Linus, please! Linus! Linus, please! Linus! Help! Hold it! Put her down. Sam! Your investigation. Did you happen to find out I was a black belt in karate? You understand, McLeod? I could finish you with one job any time I wanted to. But it'd be interesting to see just how brittle your bones are. He'll chop them apart. We better go in, Chief. 
No, I promised McLeod we'd wait till he gets Morton to say all we need. This is fun. I haven't had a workout since this morning. I did everything possible not to kill you. But you're out for vengeance. I had no choice. You see, McLeod, you're just like all the others. You're no match for me. Neither was that Indian you framed in Phoenix. Ah, innocent bystander. Now there are only two left, you and Holly. After that, no one can trace me to the money or the jewel. That does it. Let's get up there before he kills him. Get out of here, Holly! What about you? about that boy. Well, you check exactly what she said, Chief, and she didn't lie. The insurance company offers a 5% finder's fee. She'd get $50,000. Well, she deserves it. All right, I won't press charges. Probably wouldn't hold up anyway. She can collect the money. Appreciate it, Chief. And I'd appreciate it if we can get on with our weekly bull session. Now, take your seat. Right. Over here, McLeod, with your back to the window. Oh, Chief, uh, there's one more little thing. What is it? That finder's fee. The rest of it's coming to me. No way. An officer can't accept reward money. Well, I wasn't an officer at the time. That's just a technicality. Yeah. Worth $50,000. Well, his pulse is back full. His blood pressure like a 30-year-old. Okay. His respiration's normal. And... I think I'm ready for some brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. See? I was talking with my son. He's out of jail free. <laughs> Chief, give the medical profession a break. Don't teach this trick to anybody else. I have great plans for all the money that you gave me. Our tribe will be able to do much good work and add it to all the other money. What other money? Forget it, Chief. Shh. What money? The money that she gave me. Well, I had so much. Hmm. With her 50,000, we'll be able to do business. 50,000. I told you I was a failure. I never could hang on to a buck. I guess we got the same problem. You a sucker for uh, Indian chiefs and trombone players, too? 